In this tutorial, we're going to look at the noble gases. The first aim is to describe the properties of the noble gases, then explain some uses of the noble gases. In 1937, the German airship the Hindenburg incinerated and crashed, killing over 30 people. This entire event was actually captured on film, and you can even see footage of it, the original footage on YouTube. To make the ship fly, they filled it with hydrogen. Hydrogen is a very light element, much less dense than air, so it helps this airship float. However, hydrogen is also incredibly reactive, and when it caught fire, it didn't take much to bring it to the ground. These days, airships are filled with helium. Helium is completely unreactive and much safer than hydrogen. Helium is an example of a noble gas. The thing about the group A or group 0, as they're also called noble gases, are that they are colourless and they're completely unreactive, which makes them very difficult to spot. In fact, discovering them was not easy. The noble gases were discovered when scientists realised that nitrogen produced by chemical reactions in a lab had a different density to the atmospheric nitrogen. They asked, what on earth could cause this difference in density should be the same stuff? Their conclusion was, hidden within the atmospheric nitrogen, there must be other gases. This led to the discovery of the noble gases, helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. In fact, the word argon is derived from the Greek word for lazy. The noble gases are seen as the lazy gases because they don't really do much, they don't react, they don't have a nice colour, but believe it or not, sometimes boring can be very, very useful. So now we're going to look at the properties of the noble gases. Remember, helium at the top, then going to neon, argon, krypton, xenon and radon. You will find them in the far right hand side of your periodic table, the last group, sometimes called group 8, but also known as group 0. In your tables, it'll say group 0. But think of that 0 rather than the number 0. Think of it as a circle meaning complete, meaning all group zero or group circle elements have a complete outer shell. This explains why the noble gases are completely unreactive, they are inert. This is also why noble gases do not form ions, because they don't need to lose or gain electrons, they already start with complete outer shells. The boiling point and density, boiling point degree Celsius density in grams per centimetre cubed, increases as you go down the group. So helium has the lowest boiling point and density, and radon has the highest. In fact, if you filled a balloon with radon or xenon, it would sink like a lead balloon, because it's so much denser than air. In exams, they may give you a table of properties. For example, they may show you argon, with a boiling point of minus 186 and a density of 0 0.0018 grams per centimetre cubed and xenon with minus 108 and 0 0.0059 grams per centimetre cubed. They may ask you to estimate the boiling point of krypton and the density of krypton. Don't let this phase you. All you have to do is pick a number in between these two values. Roughly in the middle would help. So something like minus 140 would fit between these two nicely. Or something like 0 0.003 would fit nicely in between here. So don't be phased by these questions. They're really easy. Just pick values in between the values given. But the key properties of the noble gases are colourless, non-flammable and inert. They do not react. And that's why they're non-flammable. And that's how you describe the properties of the noble gases. So now let's finish by looking at the uses of some noble gases. You need to know argon. Argon provides the inert atmosphere in filament lamps because it's non-flammable. So in other words, the gas inside here isn't oxygen, it's argon. If it was oxygen, it would burn that filament away so the lamp would break very quickly. But argon is completely unreactive, allowing the filament to last for longer. You can also use argon atmospheres when welding metals so the metals don't react with oxygen when they're really hot. And as you've seen, helium can be used in airships because it has a low density. And also, at every party you will see some kid crying because our helium balloons escaped into the atmosphere. Interestingly, we're actually running out of helium. We are currently trying to find ways to farm helium because helium is very useful, especially in medical diagnostic techniques. The problem is helium is so low in density, it just escapes into the atmosphere and away into space. So we need to find a way to make it. And that is how you explain some uses of the noble gases.